Hi everyone, today I'm going to show you a technique called bokeh background and we're going to be doing this little texturing in the background that you see on this card that I did. This image is by Stampendous and it comes in a set with a whole bunch of little animals as well as a stencil and you could buy the com complimentary cutting dies for this set if you don't want to cut them out so it makes it quite quite simple. The first thing that you're going to want to do is you're going to want to get yourself a water brush that's empty and hasn't been used for water because water does not help the technique at all. And you're going to want to get some various ink colorless blender solution and you're going to fill it up. A couple other items that you're going to need for this is you're going to need a blender pen which is the zero marker. And in this technique, I'm going to be using four different blues, B000, B00, B01, and B02. So let me show you how, let me show you how this works. The first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pre-moisten an area with the B000. And as you can see, I only have the bottom portion stamped for this image because I hand cut around the face. So it's completely separate. And right now it's not going to look like anything special. Just pre moistening with that lightest color. And I'm going to come in with my darkest color, which is the B02. And I'm just getting her done. Just want to get that color on there. I'm going to take the B01. I'm just trying to slightly soften those edges. You can see I'm not spending a lot of time trying to get it super smooth. Using the side of the brush I'm going to use B00. Using B00, I'm going to soften that edge. And then back to the B quad zero. Because I am going to be coloring this portion, I'm going to slightly color around it. And I know it's going to be a darker color, so if I accidentally go into the image, it's okay. I find that the more or the thicker the ink is applied, the better this technique works. And I think it's because um, blenderless, colorless blender solution, it pushes back the color. It displaces it, so it needs ink to push back. I'm going to add a little bit of the dark down here. 
continue it over to the other side. Blend that out with my B01. Next, my B00. I'm really putting some pressure on the side of the marker and doing it pretty quick, as you can see. Back with the B000. Do a little bit more up here. And on my card, most of this is actually covered up, so. I don't have to go overboard in this area. And I want you to see something, just a little tip. You see how quickly I'm coloring? And then I'm gonna show you the tip. You see how it's a little bit white? It means that this marker needs to be refilled. There's not enough ink in it to push down and keep it flowing. That's okay, we're almost done. We'll do a little bit of the dark up here and back to the B01 you can use all different colors for this technique. I've done it in many different colors, but for this one I wanted to keep it more like the sky would, would look like. B00. And see what we can get out of this B000. Just a little bit. All right, now comes the fun part. The way I like to do it is I like to take my water brush and I'm going to just lightly squeeze drops randomly. Now you could do something similar to this, not by squeezing, but by putting dots on your paper with the blender pen, but I find that it takes more time and I like how it really pushes the ink. So I'm just going to go ahead and random dots by squeezing the blender pen. And then I can just slightly squeeze and apply smaller dots. Now you want these to dry in between the next step. I like to have some of them overlapping, but I want to let them dry before I start overlapping them. All right, so we're going to let those dry. And while we're letting those dry, we're going to come back with the blender pen and we're going to in circles push some of that ink out of the way we're displacing the ink now I find that the blender pen doesn't quite lighten it up like the water brush does it takes a few more applications to do it this way but this way it gives you some light 
dots and it gives you some brighter dots. So some look like they're more forward where the lighter dot, dots look more in the distance. And you can see I'm slightly overlapping. Pushing some of that ink out of the way. Now while I'm doing this, my original dots that I made using the water brush are drying. And the ones that I did with the blender pen, you can go back over them multiple times and every time you do, they will slightly lighten up. There are colors that are harder to do this with. That would be like the reds and some of the brown tones because they have quite a bit of red in them. Uh, black is a bugger to actually get back to white. So keep that in mind. You might want to test it on another piece of paper and see how it's going to react with the blender solution. I first saw this technique done um, by my friend Zoe and I just love the effect that it gives so try to do it more often on some of my backgrounds. Alright so now that we got a lot of that done we can go back and lighten up without squeezing some of these other dots that I originally had done. Remember every time you apply the blender, the colorless blender solution, it will lighten it up even more. We can overlap a couple just by squeezing. Pretty simple. I got one up here that's going to be a little have a mind of its own. Back with the blender pen to push a little bit more out. And remember having them overlap really does give them a nice look. All right, I think you have the idea. Just gives you another way to do backgrounds for cards or pieces of artwork. And when you're all done, hopefully you can create a nice cute little card like this. Like, share, and subscribe. Thank you.